100 days of hardcore Minecraft. Now that is a lot of game time. That is 33 hours. And there's a lot of 100 day videos out there, but there's not one like this. I'm gonna try to survive 100 days in an ocean only world. I've always appreciated the ocean in Minecraft. It's a great place to adventure and find resources, but hidden behind its beauties lurks a lot of danger. And in this ocean only world, that means there are no trees, no villages, none of the everyday essentials that you usually have in Minecraft. But regardless, I'm going to see if I got what it takes to survive 100 days in this ocean only world. And before the 100 days is up, I want to be able to achieve full enchanted netherite armor before slaying the dragon. Not that I really need it. It's more so just flex. And if you guys go on to enjoy this video, you should consider subscribing and dropping a like on this video. And now that we got all that out of the way, let's begin. <laughs> Day one, I didn't want to spend too much time getting pruny in the ocean, so I swam over to a sunken ship nearby for some loot. There I was able to get a lot of wood and some food. I made sure to take as much wood as possible since I wasn't going to be getting any trees during this series. After punching the ship, I swam to a nearby ravine to get some stone, where I actually heard a baby zombie riding a chicken. I didn't expect to have any surface animals in this series, but I wasn't going to pass on the opportunity. After rescuing the chicken from the possessed child, I had safely escorted him out of the cave. After we made our escape, I realized I spent the entire first day rescuing my little chickpea. And yeah, that's kind of what I, I thought about as the name in the moment. But it was worth it. I spent all night trying to find some decent loot from shipwrecks and fallen portals until I found this giant coral reef. I knew this was going to be where I was going to set up camp. So I patiently waited for the sun to rise. Day two, I began making a simple platform, store my valuables in a chest and for chickpea to live on. In the meantime, so that nothing bad happens to him while I go on adventures. He is a hood chicken, so I was a bit skeptical leaving him at home with, uh, with all my valuables. But nonetheless, they had a treasure map from a sunken ship that I figured was worth looting. After setting out on an adventure and looting a couple ships, I realized I spent almost the entire day going in the wrong direction of the map. But because I didn't have a bed, I figured it was worth traveling through the night. After getting the loot from the treasure chest, I was mildly disappointed. I traveled all the way for one diamond and a bunch of iron. And on top of the bad treasure chest, it started raining so night two wasn't going so well i decided to shovel a bunch of sand that i was going to need for a project on day three hey look at that it's day three now and it's still raining so let's get started on that project i wanted to make a tube that goes from the platform down to the mine shaft below my base so i dropped a bunch of sand stopped the water flow and began mining down I wanted to create a water source that slows me down whenever I jump down the hole, but I accidentally made it too high and I got myself trapped in a hole. But that's okay because I got a massive brain. I knew I was going to need an exit to swim out anyways. After clearing out a small room, I tested my water dropper and it worked perfectly. Day four, I spent mining down to level 11 to get those juicy diamonds. After getting down to level 11, I cleared out a small room and started placing some torches to avoid mob spawning. Luckily, with all the materials I got, I can now make iron armor and a shield. I spent the rest of the day cleaning out the mine shaft, doing a bit of vein mining and it wasn't too long until we found our first set of diamonds and on our second vein we actually found even more we were already rolling in diamonds when i surfaced i noticed it started getting a little dark so i spent the night traveling all the way back to spawn where i saved chickpea since there was a mine shaft there i knew i'd be able to get some string to make wool and then a bed after getting in the mine shaft i also immediately found a name tag so i could give that to chickpea to make sure he never despawns I spent a lot of time roaming around in the mine shaft, collecting string and trying to find chest, hoping to get a sampling. Spoiler alert, that didn't happen though. Day five, I surfaced and noticed the day was almost over. But then I was attacked by undead Poseidon. So I clapped his cheeks and stole his triton. I decided since the day is almost over anyways, I might as well go back to the mine shaft. Boy, was that a mistake though. Cause right when I got back, I started getting bullied by tons of mobs. Since this is hardcore, I ain't gonna die today. We gonna go ahead and leave. I spent the rest of day five traveling home just in time for the sunset. Set. I made a bed, finally got my first night's sleep. Day six through seven, I figured now that we have a decent bit of materials, I should start working on the base. I decided to start expanding and going upwards from the docks. I feel this will look pretty cool. If you guys have been subscribed for a while, you would know that my hardcore series is built entirely underwater. So you can say I got some experience working with water. I decided the first expansion was going to be a giant circle filled with dirt that I got from the mine shaft and hope that one day maybe I could get a sapling or a grass block for animals to spawn. Hey, speaking of animals, where's Chickpea? 
That chicken did not seriously leave me. I also made a smaller circle so that I can start farming with all the food that I've been hoarding from the sea. Day eight, despite finding Nemo's dad's warning about leaving the reef, I chose to set off an adventure and not too far out of the reef, I actually found Jigby. I knew he couldn't survive without me. I took him safely home. Now I really set out on an adventure. I was really hoping to find anything that would help me survive this hundred days. I really wanted to get saplings for trees. I stopped at every single ship and fallen portal. I even went treasure hunting and you guys know I hate treasure chests. At the end of the day, I decided to Google whether or not I could even get saplings. Uh, it turns out, yeah, no, I can't. Day nine, I was still sad about finding out that I wasn't able to get saplings. So I spent the entire day working on my farm. You guys know I love farming, but some bad news is I also realized Chickpea is gone again. Day 10, I decided I should probably hunt down Chickpea. So I began circling around the base to try to find him. This time I thought he was actually gone, but nope, I, he can't escape me. I found him splashing his feathers around the edge of the reef again. I took him home and made sure that this time I'd block him into a hole. But I also decided to make an anvil and give him the name tag that I had gotten in the mine shaft. Not gonna lie, last minute I wanted to name him Wilson for obvious reasons. Day 11, I noticed that there was a tiny island nearby. So I decided to go on an adventure to hopefully find another island that might have a grass block on it. But while searching, I noticed some odd light source down in the water. Turned out to be a fully exposed stronghold. That's gonna save me a lot of time later when we go to fight the dragon. I quickly found the portal room, destroyed the silverfish spawner so that we can have a secure room later on. After leaving the stronghold, I continued the adventure in hopes of finding an island. After looting tons of portals and ships and not seeing any islands, I had to give up and go home. Day 12, I wanted to start building an official house. However, wood is going to be an issue later on. So I figured I should just go to the nether and get some wood there. But first, I would make armor with all the diamonds that I got from mining. Then I made, then I made my way down to the mine shaft to get some obsidian for the portal. After punching obsidian for what felt like forever, I built our first portal. Don't worry, this isn't going to be a permanent portal. I, I'll make a cooler one later. Day 13 through 15, I spent in the nether. The portal luckily spit us out in a crimson forest, which is going to be pretty great later on when we need wood. I basically just spent the next two days wandering around in the nether trying to find anything useful. I managed to find a bastion not far from the portal, which could be very useful for some resources. However, it's stables, the worst bastion. After giving up on trying to find gold in it, I continued to wander in hopes of finding a fortress in a warped forest. Spoilers, I only found one of those, and it wasn't a fortress. I spent a lot of time trying to find all the biomes. Somehow, I still just couldn't find a fortress. But that's fine, because we gathered lots of resources that we'd be able to use on a house. Day 16, I began building a, the biggest... <laughs> I began building the biggest circle I've ever built, so I could have plenty of room to be able to build a new house. But I heavily underestimated how much cobble I would need, so I had to go down to the mines, and since your boy always forgets to put torches, there was a party going on down there. I had some close calls with some skellies, but nothing to be worried about. I basically spent the rest of day 16 mining all the cobblestone that I would need for this build. But it was worth it because I managed to find some more diamonds. Day 17, I began the build process for the house. And if you guys have been subscribed for a while, you would know that I'm horribly indecisive with building houses. It literally took me until day 19 to decide on a build. And it didn't even include any of the wood I got from the nether. Instead, it would be blackstone and basalt. So on day 18, I spent back in the nether getting basalt and blackstone and nothing nothing too special on this day but on day 19 we had a game plan we had a design that is until we heard a wandering trader show up i quickly stopped everything i was doing to go talk to him because he's able to sell me saplings which he did have some but he had birch saplings the ugliest most disgusting tree i thought the minecraft gods were against me that is until I threw an egg that chickpea laid and popped out another chicken. That's when I realized I'm going to be a chicken rancher. Anyways, I grabbed all my emeralds and started buying things off the wandering trader. However, I wasn't going to let him get away that easily. So I picked him up in the brown pearl and hoped that he wouldn't despawn since, he, uh, <laughs> since he's in a boat. Day 20, I continued the house. It was turning out magnificent. I honestly enjoyed this build a lot. It definitely turned out a lot more sinister than I thought, but that's what you got to do to survive in these streets. <laughs> You gotta look intimidating. Day 21, I spent the entire day moving into the new house and organizing all my stuff into chests. Again, I forgot to put torches in my house and now a bunch of zombies moved in. I had to quickly take care of them so I could get my first night's sleep in the new house. Day 22, I began working on my farms. I started expanding those delicious potatoes and getting rid of all the beetroots because come on, who actually likes beetroot? Afterwards, I figured I'd chop down the birch trees to make sure I got some more saplings. So I patiently waited. And luckily we got a birch sapling. 
I, be I began planning a bur I began planning a birch forest. I resisted the temptation of throwing up while doing it because I knew it'd be good for my chickens to have a better place to live other than a boat and a hole. With all that wood I got, I was able to make a bunch of fences to make sure my chickens don't get swept out to sea. Day 23, I knew I'd be working on enchants at some point, so I needed a place to put my enchantment room. So I thought it'd be a pretty cool idea to make a basement underneath the house where I would have my enchantment table and bookshelves. When finishing up the basement, I heard strange demon sounds coming from outside. Got me a little bit worried, I'm not gonna lie. If you didn't hear it, uh, it's like a puffer fish. Like when you're like, whoop. Day 24, I thought it'd be a good idea to go to the nether, try to slay some hoglins to get leather for books. Turned out this wasn't the case and I wasted almost an entire day and I hardly got any leather. But before I quit, I saw a party of piglins hunting down a bunch of hoglins in the area. That's when I realized I could actually get a lot of leather from piglin trades. So on day 25, I grabbed all my gold and returned to the nether. It wasn't too hard to round up a bunch of these small brains and put them in a hole. Then it became a waiting game. Them evaluating what kind of trash they're going to give me for my quality gold. But it worked out in the end because I got a lot of leather, pearls, string, and a lot of other things. When I woke up on day 26, I heard a bunch of mobs in the basement. I realized I forgot to put torches down there. No worries, I'll just get to- Oh my god, there's a creeper! I didn't realize he followed me up the waterfall. After he exploded, I thought half my house was going to be gone. But luckily, since he was completely underwater, he didn't do any structural damage. After getting rid of the squatters in the basement, I realized Chickpea is still stuck in a hole. After freeing him, he was terrified. He was terrified of the outside world. He wouldn't even move. So I got the only seed I had to try to lure him into, a ch into the chicken forest. Turns out chickens do like beetroot seeds. That's news to me. Day 27, I began working on the bookshelves for our enchantment room. But unfortunately, I didn't have enough paper for the whole thing. So I set out on an adventure and somehow I keep discovering new ships. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'll obviously take all the loot. I just figured that, you know, eventually I would run out of the ones nearby. While out adventuring, I found what might be the tiniest little island. It's literally just one block. But the sun was setting and the adventure was coming to an end because I finally got all the paper that I was going to need. So I wrangled up a dolphin and swam back home. Day 28, I finished making all the bookshelves that I would need for the enchantment room to give us the max level enchantments. Now, all I needed was an enchantment table, but I realized I needed obsidian. So I decided to tear down an underwater portal that's right next to the house. After completing the enchantment table naturally the first thing i would enchant is my pickaxe and i got terrible enchants so i immediately grindstoned that bad boy day 29 i decided with our new enchantment table that i was probably going to need to start making some xp farms i decided just making that iconic mob grinder since it's easy to afk and let mobs build up but first i would need a lot of cobblestone so back to the mines for us i pretty much spent the entire day punching rocks but i did at least add some torches to the mine shaft day 30 now that we got all the materials for the mob grinder it was building time we had to start with that classic circle platform i'm starting to worry that the base might start looking a little bit wonky because all the circles are different sizes anyways i won't bore you too much with the details since everyone's built a mob grinder before but i tried not to waste as much time as possible while building it so i worked through the night that was a huge mistake there was way too many mobs on the ground level and there was even creepers in my house but thanks to my trusty bow and my big brain i was able to snipe them through the window so that i can get a good night's rest day 31 i was putting the finishing touches on the mob grinder how However, the mobs were instantly dying whenever they would hit the ground. That works well for getting materials. However, I need XP. So I raised the platform a bit so that the mobs don't take fall damage. Seemed like it was working for the most part. So I figured I would let the mobs pile up while I went to go check on my baby chickens and chop down the birch forest for more fences. Day 32, I noticed mobs still weren't surviving the fall. So I raised the platform a bit more. It seemed like it was working perfectly now. So while waiting for mobs, I decided to start working on the potato farm until suddenly a zombie villager fell down. This was huge. I didn't actually think that I was going to have a chance to get a villager during this series. I sprang into action. Luckily, it was turning nighttime, so I quickly got a boat so I can make sure he won't despawn. Then I had the realization that the wandering trader actually despawned in a boat. I quickly built a shelter around him so that I could sleep and he won't die during daylight. Day 33, I realized I wasn't prepared for this. The only thing I had was a spider eye. I was still going to need a brown mushroom, some blaze rods for a brewing stand, an apple, and some sugar. Now, I didn't know how long I would have or if he would ever even despawn. But regardless, I ran through the nether to get some brown mushrooms. That was easy. But what wasn't easy is finding a fortress because I hadn't found one yet. Luckily, not too far from the basalt biome that I've been farming at, there was actually a fortress. I was able to quickly navigate through the fortress to the blaze spawners. I even still had a fire rest potion on me from trading with piglins. After getting all the blaze rods, I needed to hurry home to set up the brew stands. Day 34, I realized birch trees don't drop apples. So with the power of Google, I found out that I could actually get apples out of the stronghold chests. And luckily, since we found the stronghold already by accident, I quickly 
simply sailed over. To my surprise, there was another zombie villager actually in there. I thought there's no way I could be this lucky. Well, I wasn't. I needed wood for a boat, but then I got chased by a creeper. Then that creeper blew up that another zombie villager. But that's okay because I looted a chest in the creeper room and there was exactly one apple by itself. The Minecraft gods were definitely on my side today. For the rest of the day, I spent traveling around and hopefully trying to find an island that'll have some sugar cane on it. Day 35, I luckily did find that exact island. But I was so far from home that it would take an entire day just to get back. So day 36, revival day. After making sure our new friend hadn't despawned, I rushed in to make potions so I could bathe him and feed him those delicious golden apples. I figured while waiting for him to revive, I should work on making him a house. It didn't have to be too big or flashy, just big enough for him to stretch his legs a bit. While building it, I was notified that he was no longer a smelly boy, which works out because I was pretty much done with the house anyways. After moving him in, he didn't seem too excited for some reason, but maybe that's because he wants a friend. Day 37, I was getting pretty annoyed with the current system I have with getting up and down in my house. So I figured why not just build a water elevator? I've done it before, how hard could it be? Well, I spent the whole day flooding my house and getting Getting irritated until I finally gave up and watched a tutorial. Turns out I just need to place some blocks on the side so water doesn't pour out. I decided to use glass though, since it looks fancy. Day 38 was a pretty random day. Didn't have much of a game plan. I started off by decorating my villager's house. Then I just got some enchantments on my armor. Punched some mobs in the grinder. I wasn't sure what job I wanted to give my first villager, so I tabbed out to Google all the benefits. Then I got sidetracked and started watching a PewDiePie video for the rest of the day. Ooh, what's that? Eight. I'll take it. Day 39, I finally decided what job would be the most useful for me right now. A lectern. So that I can get a lot of mending books. But also, I was able to buy name tags. The first thing he wanted to sell me was Silk Touch, which was actually a hard thing to say no to, considering if somehow, some way, I'm able to find a grass block, I'm going to need it. But after that, I spent the entirety of Day 39 resetting his trades. He kept offering me all these OP enchants, like looting and infinite and more Silk Touch, but he would not give me mending. That is until Day 40. Day 40, he finally gave me the mending books, and practically for free. I bought a couple mending books and put them on my pickaxe and chest plate. I spent the rest of the day working on the farms and multiplying chickens. It was just a chore day, really. That is until the sun started setting and another zombie villager fell down the mob grinder. I was sure this was going to be easy since I did this before. All I got to do is lure him over. After I got him in a boat, it... Yep, no, it died. He died. At first, I was pretty confused. But then I remembered I had thorns on my chest plate, so every time the zombie villager would hit me, he would also take damage. So today was a sad day. Day 41, I started off right by chopping away at the mob grinder. But for some reason, there was a music disc in there. I mean, I'm not going to complain. You can't go wrong with some sweet tunes. But there was no time for music because I decided to go on an adventure today. I wanted to do some nether travel. So I'm able to not run that far away in the nether, but teleport super far away in the overworld. After going through the portal, it spawned me right next to some diamonds which i thought was pretty awesome but then there was more diamonds and even more this actually blew my mind first of all to be lucky enough to find diamonds right outside of a portal but then find three stacks or three piles of diamonds since i have fortune on my pickaxe i actually ended up with 37 diamonds but i didn't come here for the diamonds i surfaced and it was all depressing and raining outside so i slept Day 42. My real goal for coming all the way out here is to hopefully find an island with a grass block. It's becoming harder to believe that that's even going to be possible to get. I spent the entire day boating around. I stopped at a lot of ships because these are pretty far away from home and I'm never going to see them again anyways. But then I found a drowned with an enchanted triton. I had to clap his cheeks. I wanted to know what enchants he had. But unfortunately, he took that triton to the grave. After that, I managed to find a pretty large island with some sugar cane on it. This gave me a lot of hope that I could still find a grass block. But it was getting dark, so I camped out on the island. Day 43 after leaving the island, I couldn't find anything really good at all. This ocean started actually making me a little crazy. I couldn't even find any more islands. But then in the distance, I noticed a chicken. This confused me because it didn't look like there was any caves nearby that he could have came out of. This sealed the deal that I truly am the chicken god, though. After I wrangled him in the brown pearl, I decided it was time to go home. On the way back to the portal, I realized it wasn't going to be easy to take that chicken all the way underwater, then through the nether without seeds. That left me with no other choice. I decided to leave him on a small island, I found. Who knows, maybe one day I'll come back for him. Day 44, we were back at home. I have in my notes that I accidentally AFK'd because I was eating a bowl of cereal. So, day 45. We started off by leaving base camp because I needed to go shovel some sand. Why sand, you ask? Because I wanted to craft some TNT, of course. But for TNT, we would need a lot of gunpowder. So we started swinging away at the mob grinder. However, I noticed it was getting pretty slow. So I climbed all the way to the top of it and it sounded like there were some spiders clogging it up. I figured I wouldn't worry about 
about it too much right now because I already had a lot of gunpowder. Day 46, I went into the nether and started digging down to Y level 17. Everyone knows this is the best level to mine with TNT. After laying a big strip of TNT and many explosions later, with only a couple close calls to burning to death, we finally got some ancient debris. It wasn't much, especially because we used all of our TNT, but that's okay, because we got an OP enchanted pickaxe. A lot of people hate mining for ancient debris with their pickaxe, but honestly, it's like ASMR to me. And since I had mending, all I had to do was hit some quartz every now and then. But it was worth it because I managed to bag 10 ancient debris before heading home. With 10 ancient debris, I can make two ingots, which I actually used on my chest plate and pickaxe. So today was a pretty good day. Day 47, I started off by making a bunch of carpet so I can hopefully stop spiders from spawning inside the mob grinder. So I climbed to the top and hopped inside. It didn't seem like there was anything too wrong with it, but I figured I already committed to the carpet, so I might as well place them. While waiting for mobs to start raining from the mob grinder, I decided to hatch all the eggs I've been hoarding. Let's just say I got pretty lucky, further proving my point that I am the chicken god. Day 48, I had a late start to the day, but I started off right, enchanting my pants. I managed to get some protection and I'm breaking. That's better than nothing. While on my way to the mob grinder, I noticed there was another wandering trader. I rushed over to see what kind of trades he has. And turns out, he has some oak saplings. I mean, he also has acacia saplings, but oak saplings. But what was weird about him is that he didn't have his leads. I'd only ever seen this one other time, and it was because the leads broke, and I assumed they just despawned. But regardless, I busted out that bling bling, and I bought a handful of saplings. Day 49 was possibly the best day ever. It's finally time to get rid of the gross birch forest. After chopping all the logs and getting a little impatient, I burned down the leaves. After planting all the oak trees, I used some bone meal to make sure that I was going to get some more saplings. There was no way I was going to run out of oak trees now. But after growing all the trees, I realized something's wrong. They're all kind of short. And we're only tall boys here. So I chopped down all the small boys and grew some nice tall oak trees. Day 50, halfway to 100. I started off the day by making some more diamond tools because I'm rolling in diamonds and I didn't even realize that my tools all weren't diamond yet. Afterwards, I wanted to go farm the mob grinder, but it still is just crazy slow. I'm starting to realize that I can't rely on this thing for XP. But I figured I'd do a tiny bit more testing before I officially gave up. I added an extra layer of slabs on top to the roof. Maybe somehow that maybe if there's any light bleeding through the corners. It seemed like it was doing a bit better throughout the day. However, right before I slept, I noticed another zombie villager. Me being the professional zombie villager snatcher, I was able to sneak him out and trap him in a dirt hut. Then I gave him that sweet nectar so then he could become human again. Day 51, I wanted to enchant the last of my armor. My axe surprisingly got silk touch on it. Also, our new villager is no longer a zombie. I wasn't sure what job I wanted to give him and then it hit me. I wanted him to become a farmer for a couple of reasons. One, I can sell him potatoes and make tons of money. And two, he'll hopefully sell apples so I could turn into more golden apples. He was being pretty difficult and wouldn't stay in the fences that I made for him. After pushing him around for an hour, he finally stayed behind the fences. That is until he started climbing over again. Day 52 through 57. Since one of my goals for this 100 days is to have full netherite armor, I needed to get to mining. I crafted all the TNT I could and set off on an adventure into the nether. This time I decided to dig down in a fresh new area. While I was mining with TNT, I managed to somehow only get one ancient debris with all, all of my TNT. I wasn't going to leave until I had enough netherite for all my armor. So I started mindlessly swinging my pickaxe for the next five days. Yes, literally five Minecraft days. I only stopped because my pickaxe was getting dangerously low. On the way home, I tried my best to heal it by punching as much of the quartz as I could for XP. Day 58, after making a home with all the goods, I quickly made all the netherite ingots I got. And I even managed to get that sweet achievement for all my armor. I decided to save my last ingot because I couldn't really decide if I wanted to use on my axe or sword. Regardless, I decided to flex on everyone with my new armor. The wandering merchant was in awe. The farmer was impressed and the chickens, well, they just gave me some more eggs. After my flex fest, I took a look around and realized the place needed a bit of work. I decided to start off by working on the dock. Seems like it would be a pretty simple project to start and it didn't take that much time. I thought it looked pretty good afterwards. But after the dock, I decided to break the nether portal because I wanted to move it to be a part of the base. Day 59, I started off by collecting eggs, but then I noticed a tree grew and suffocated one of my chickens. So I slayed that tree. And honestly, it was probably a good thing though, because I'm starting to have too many chickens. Afterwards, I began working on the new platform for the nether portal. I wanted to make it big enough to where I got all the room for a custom looking portal. That's when life took a 180. After I made a giant platform, I realized it was heavily lopsided. So I had to tear it all down and rebuild it again. This took an entire nether day. 
Day 61, I finally finished building the platform. Yes, again, it was lopsided. I was beginning to think my brain was lopsided. I wasn't gonna chop down the whole thing again because that was a huge waste of time. Instead, I kind of just shaped it and luckily the third time's a charm, it turned out perfect. Day 62 to 63, I began working on construction for the portal. I've always been a fan of custom looking portals that look oddly shaped. For this one, I was gonna try to make it a bit more like a, like a circle. I think it ended up looking pretty awesome. Day 63, I wanted to get some XP for some enchants, but I had completely given up on the mob grinder. I knew I was going to need something much more reliable, so I decided to venture back to spawn where we found Chickpea, because there was that mine shaft, always coming in clutch. But that also means that there was going to be a spider spawner. I remember using a spider farm in my previous 100-day video, and it worked out great. Day 64, I managed to find the spider spawner, but it was in a horrible location. But it was the only one I could find, so I needed to make it work. I pretty much spent the entire day clearing out the room and fighting mobs because they wouldn't leave me alone and let me work in peace. Day 65, we made some good progress on the farmer. We managed to get the room shaped out and got water flowing. But then there was too much water since the cave opened up into the ocean. That just slowed down everything and made it so much more difficult. Day 66, I was able to put the final touches on the spawner and get rid of all the torches. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a functioning XP farmer. Day 67, I AFK'd almost the entire day, but within good reason. On day 66, 68, there was a giant swarm of spiders piled up. I mean, how satisfying is that? Not to mention all the XP I got. Oh, yeah. Day 69. <laughs> nice. I decided to put all those levels to use. I started by enchanting my sword, which I managed to get smite. Could be better, but honestly, I'll just take it. I decided for the next couple days, I should start preparing myself for the Ender Dragon fight. Day 70, I decided to spend the entire day leveling my farmer so I could be able to get apples. That I could turn into golden apples. But because I'm so lucky, he decided to sell me pumpkin pies instead of apples. But because I got a big brain, I was also chopping down trees. Which I was able to get apples that way. Day 71, I wanted to spend all my riches by buying mending books for all my netherite equipment. Last thing you'd want is for one of those things to break. Otherwise, didn't really do too much on this day. Day 72, since I lost all my levels using those mending books, I needed more XP for one last enchant my bow. So I spent all of day 72 at the spider spawner farm. After getting back to level 30, I left and went straight home to do some enchants. Naturally, I would have wanted infinite, but I could definitely settle with damage 4 on breaking and knockback. Day 73, I spent the entire day getting gold. I was pretty tempted to go to an ocean monument and get gold there, but I didn't want to have to risk getting miners fatigue and have to sit around waiting for it since we didn't have milk. So I decided to mine all the gold that we've been skipping in the nether. And with my fortune pickaxe, you already know I got a lot of gold. I'm managed to craft all the apples I had into golden apples and even make a stack of golden carrots. I also realized I still had that one netherite ingot. I decided to use it on my sword. Day 74, honestly, I just wanted to relax and hang out. I gave my last goodbyes to my villagers and even the chickens, even though they're beginning to overpopulate, but it doesn't matter. Tomorrow could be the end. Day 75, I grabbed my ender pearls, crafted 12 eyes, and double check to make sure I had everything I was gonna need. Then I set off to the stronghold. When I entered the portal room, it was just chaos. There were so many mobs everywhere. After clearing the room, it was time. I jumped in. Day 76, after returning home from that Ender Dragon fight, I knew the adventure wasn't over, for me at least. The Wandering Trader, he was done for, mainly because I needed the boat he was in. But also, I wanted a new trader to spawn. Regardless, I went back to the stronghold and jumped into the end, because I wanted to get an Elytra. But what I didn't know is that this would be an 11-day journey before I even found my first end city. In the beginning, I was carelessly purling around and fighting Endermen, which, which made me waste so much food. I mindlessly kept running around until on day 87 because on day 87 i found my first end city this thing was huge 
But when I approached it, my worst nightmares became reality. The first end city I found didn't even have a ship, which meant no elytra. I have never had this bad of luck in Minecraft. I was dangerously low on food, but I had to keep going. Day 89, I managed to find another end city. And this one was definitely the biggest one I have seen yet. I mean, it was massive. But more importantly, while approaching it, I noticed there was a ship. I gathered blocks and climbed up to it, slayed the shulkers and got my elytra. There was also some decent diamond gear inside the chest. With the elytra, I was able to find a portal fairly easily to make my way home. I pretty much wanted to spend the remainder of the 100 days at home. Day 91, I realized I should probably start getting my villagers to breed, but my lectern was being pretty difficult and just kept wanting to go back home. Actually took forever just to get it into the fence. I had to make like a little bridge and kind of boat it over. It, just, it was a whole thing. Day 92, I woke up to the sounds of lovemaking. I looked out my window to find my villagers having a great time, but it turns out they just weren't compatible. This is going to make things a lot harder because then I'd had to get another zombie villager to try to do the baby making. After awkwardly examining my villagers, I realized how much the cobblestone floor started bothering me. So on day 93, I spent the entire day working on a cool pattern down near the docks. I realized I liked it so much that I spent the next two days pretty much redoing the outline of all the circles at my base. Ideally, I wanted to swap out all the cobblestone entirely with spruce wood, but for that, I'd probably need a sapling. Day 94, I decided now that I got an elytra, I'm going to need some fireworks. But for that, I'm going to need a lot of paper. So I began constructing a small sugarcane farm for the next two days. But on day 95, a wandering merchant had spawned. Unfortunately for him, he didn't have any good deals. And I wasn't going to pass up another chance to get some leads. I realized I might want to save one of the llamas, but then it fell in water and then it just kind of turned into too much work and it kept spitting at me. So maybe next time. For the remainder of the day, I pretty much just spent working on the sugarcane farm. Day 96, I realized this entire series, I have not fished not even once all this ocean and not even fished one of the most relaxing peaceful and fun things to do in minecraft so i thought it'd actually be an awesome idea to build a vacation house so i went to the island nearby the base and decided to start building a little vacation house for us where you know I'll probably do my relaxing my fishing things like that and after completing my awesome little vibey spot it was time to throw out my first cast and this is where i'm going to hit you with a cheesy pickup line I hope I hooked you with this video. <laughs> oh, that was bad. I hope you guys enjoyed this 100 days. I had a lot of fun doing it. And if you guys would want to see another 100 days, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. It'll let me know that you're actually interested in wanting to see more on this world. Because I do have a lot of things planned that I would want to do. But for now, most recent videos are popping up on the screen. Go check them out if you guys haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next one.